The tarantula hobby has grown over the last couple of decades to dimensions I never thought I'd experience because this is not something people did 30, 40 years ago for sure. Tarantula hobby is big at the moment and there are a lot of extremely knowledgeable people out there. The first line is ironically reptile shops. You'll find stores that are specializing in reptiles Naturally, they go to amphibians like frogs, newts, toads, and salamanders. And further, naturally, they go to invertebrates. Millipedes, scorpions, tarantulas, centipedes, and the like are all becoming common captive bred animals. So for the common person, that's the usual place to go, is an animal specialty store, an exotic animal store, or a reptile store. Check out listings in your local papers, see who's around where you live. If you're not in an area of the country that has a shop like that, sorry, but then online is the only the place to go. And I would look for the many excellent tarantula breeders who are on the market right now. People who work usually from a home-based business, but just have an arachnophobia that's a good kind, and that they love tarantulas, know more about them than most scientific people, and will steer you in the right direction. Responsible purchasing comes from responsible sellers, and that's what you have to seek out. People who are not just looking to make a quick sale, and tell you anything you want to hear, that tends to be more in the big box store type of pet stores that have dog, cats, bird, fish, oh yeah, and we have a tarantula. They can't possibly be as knowledgeable as somebody who breeds tarantulas for a living. So stick to people who really know their stuff, the local specialty shop or the online breeders. Breeders are fantastic, of course, because you're getting captive bred animals, not wild caught ones. So do your homework on who you're purchasing from just as much as you're doing homework on what you're purchasing, and you'll have a excellent experience having a tarantula as a pet. Tarantulas are probably one of the most easygoing, easiest pets you could possibly keep. If you can get over the fact that it's a spider, and many people don't like that, arachnophobia is rampant, but it's really more of an education situation. And once you realize how simple a tarantula is to keep and how handleable some of the species are, it becomes a most excellent pet. For our society being in smaller and smaller homes and apartments, this is ideal because a 10 gallon tank is pretty much a large enough tank for any type of tarantula to keep for a long period of time. And if you get a nice female tarantula, you could get one that lives for 20 to 25 years. A very low investment in your time, low investment to purchase. Some of these animals are under $30. For an animal lives 25 years, you can get an awful lot of enjoyment out of them. So what's the best place to get them? What's the best type of tarantula? There are wild caught ones and they predominate in the pet world. There are captive hatched ones. Those are tarantulas that the tarantula mother was taken from the wild and had babies in captivity, so they're not totally wild, not totally domesticated, kind of in-betweeners. And then there are tarantulas that come from breeders that have multi-generation, lived in this country, are free of parasites, free of diseases, and have been handled, if you will, from birth. That's probably the best way to go. A captive hatched baby tarantula. We call it a spiderling or a sling. They're teeny tiny things, sometimes an eighth of an inch wide, and are very, very, very fragile. How do you keep them? Well, you keep them in a very small container. We used to keep them in little test tube vials for shoot that in the old days. Now there's a number of enclosures you can actually have to keep the spidling in. You gotta keep the moist ones moist if they're from that environment and the humid ones uh, humi humidified. But you have to really find a place where you can find the proper size prey. That's probably the most important thing to keeping a baby spider. Little spider, little tiny insects. Most pet stores don't carry things like that. You're gonna have to figure that out. We have solutions for that at Jungle Bob's in the terms of springtails, little tiny isopod type animals that a baby spider can handle. They grow very quickly and it's very rewarding to see a spider grow from a little sling all the way up to an adult tarantula. If you're lucky and get a female, you've got a companion for the next decade or two. Tarantula behavior is such that they are, for the most part, loners as, as animals. There are species like the arboreal ones that will cluster together, but for the most part, tarantulas keep to themselves. In a burrow, some of them make a nest and sit inside of a web. They're instinctive animals. Their entire being is to eat, stay happy, and live long enough to mate. In the terms of male tarantulas, that's not a very long life. Three to five years is about the average lifespan for a male. When they get towards that end of their lives, they're 
entire existence is all about mating. They will try to mate as many times as they can, but usually it's only once or twice before they perish. They stop eating when they're in that last phase of their lives and try to find females in order to pass on their genetics. There's a misconception that every time a tarantula mates with a female, it becomes a meal the next day. Certainly that happens and we see it more and more in, in captive collections where the mating is going on inside of a little glass enclosure. But in nature, for the most part, a tarantula does his business and heads on to the next female. If he has enough left in him, he might mate three, two or three times, but for the most part, they don't make it that long. Female tarantulas live a much longer, hardier life. Desert species we see living 20 to 25 years in the wild. Rainforest creatures, high humidity temperature animals, a little bit less, somewhere in the 12 to 15 year category. But for the most part, they're loners. They stay by themselves. Their job, as far as the females are concerned, to produce and reproduce. And we see tarantulas laying up to 2,000 eggs in certain species. But they certainly put out a lot of babies very, very quickly. And in terms of their lifespan, that would be millions of babies for the higher end. So that is the behavior of the tarantula to survive in the environment that it's in, to try not to be eaten by the predators in the area, to stay secretive, to stay alone, pass on its genetics to the next generation. Feeding a tarantula is another part of the fun part. Decorating certainly is great, but feeding is where the action is, of course. And the number one uh, animal to feed to a tarantula in pet stores that's available are crickets. And the appropriate size cricket for the appropriate size tarantula usually is enough for the tarantula to be happy. However, what are crickets? They, they have a very, very hard chitinous layer on the outside. They have an exoskeleton, just like the tarantula. And inside the cricket, there's not really a lot of substance. There's no meat, very little protein, very little vitamins. So keepers long ago have understood they have to load the cricket's gut with something nutritious. And then when the tarantula eats it, he's gonna get that nutrition. You could do that organically through a series of vegetables, banana peels, carrots, potatoes. They sometimes attract fruit flies and other vermin though. So what we do really is use a gut loading product from one of the many great companies out there. Usually this is in the reptile marketplace. There's gut load devices. You'll see them dry powdered. I like the ones that are more of a jelly. That way the cricket's getting water, the cricket's getting food, the cricket is getting all types of vitamins and minerals. The tarantula comes wrong, you throw them in the tank, there's really no handing the tarantula food. You throw them in, he hunts them, he bites them, he digests them, he gets all the nutritious goodness that was inside the gut load. Very, very important to do that. And you could use super worms, goliath worms, there's a variety of things in the pet world that are available. The bigger tarantulas, of course, will eat small mice, pink mice in particular. A lot of people like to say, you know, that's a lot of expense to go through. I don't want the hassle. I'm just going to go outside and catch a couple of insects. If you live in a very rural area where there are no pesticides that have been used on the property, I would say go ahead. It's not going to be much of a problem. Lightning bugs is something we found out is not a good thing to feed any animal. Lightning bugs tend to be toxic. But if you live in a suburban area or an urban area where chemicals are used on the lawn for weed control or insecticides to control mosquitoes or what have you, please do not use any insects from those areas. They might have those pesticides in their system. If the tarantula eats one of those items, it's almost an instant death because he too is a pest. And if he eats pesticides that are designed to kill the insects, they will kill the tarantula in due course. So try to stay to your local pet store's products. Try to gut load every chance you get. You'll have a nice, fat healthy tarantula in, in good time. Many of the fears for people of keeping tarantulas, certainly the moms in the crowd who don't want their kids to have one, is what happens if it escapes? Well, prevention is worth an ounce of cure. How's that saying go? You want to prevent this from happening. So there's a bunch of wonderful products on the market that can aid in that. Certainly, you can't help it if someone leaves the door open the tarantula is going to get out but you certainly can pick a product that's got a locking mechanism on it so when you shut the door and lock it the tarantula has no means of escape it's impossible for the animal to get out of course if junior leaves the door open you're going to have an escaped tarantula this is on the new vivarium terrarium products that are in the market in the old school fish tanks we simply use a very sturdy black clip that clicks onto the side of the tank one on the left, one on the right, that lid is on there. There's no way that tarantula can get out. 
You have to be diligent in making sure you do that. You can't be distracted. You can't put it on cockeyed. You can't leave that a little bit open. You can't leave the top open. Just lock the cage if you don't want to lose your tarantula. It sounds silly enough, but people do make mistakes. No one's infallible out there. So if it does get out, what do we do? Panic, sell the house and move out of town? No, we just have to think for a second. Number one, did it just happen? Have you seen the tarantula in there? If so, what I usually do, not that it ever happened to me, is barricade the, the doors. Put something underneath the door so it can't get out of the room that it's in. It's not gonna go in the, all throughout the house. A tarantula that gets out will roam around, so you gotta make sure you know that when this happened last. When's the last time you saw the tarantula? If it's a recent thing, like you turn your back and the tarantula's out, he's in the room, obviously. So block off the lower parts of the room. What type of tarantula is it? Is it a rose hair tarantula that's pretty much terrestrial? Is it a pink toe that likes to climb up? If it's one of those, look around the ceilings, the corner of the room. That's probably the first place it's gonna go. It's gonna go right in the corner. It's gonna stop and say, I'm hidden. No one can see me, even though you can. If he's on the ground, he's gonna go under the first thing he sees. He's gonna go into a pair of your father's shoes. That's where they usually end up. Or any kind of hide spot that's dark and moist, that's where they're gonna go. So you really gotta get on your hands and knees for the terrestrial runs and just look around, slowly move things. You don't wanna do it aggressively because you could crush the tarantula. His exoskeleton is very fragile, remember. So be careful when you're doing that. And then, lastly, if that doesn't work, I sometimes would put a bowl of water out with a sponge in it. The tarantula is going to get thirsty. He's eventually going to want to find something to drink. And occasionally you can lure them back to that spot and you'll see them sitting on the sponge taking a drink of water. If you lost it three days ago, you've got a big problem on your hands. It could be just about anywhere. So. The issue is what? Keeping the cage locked. Be diligent about it. Make sure you put the clips back on on the old fish tanks and simply lock the door and you'll be safe. When it comes to handling a tarantula, the word that pops into my mind is gently, right? Although they're these hideous creatures that everybody's afraid of, they are extremely fragile. Their exoskeleton is thin in certain areas, particularly in the abdomen. The legs in particular, again, they're not pliable at all, and the least little bit of pressure could actually break them. So gentle is the word. People sometimes say, Jungle Bob, you're so rough with your animals, but you know, when picking up a tarantula like the Palomino Blonde, I know it's not gonna bite me, I simply cup the animal and put my hands underneath his legs. And this way he's cradled. I'm not smashing down on him. That would be a fatal event for the tarantula. So that's how you can easily pick up a tarantula like this. Even though his fangs are right against my fingers, I know he's not an aggressive species. I have to worry about that. Certainly if he's walking along, the best way to pick him up is to coax him. Him. By putting your hand in front of him, give him a little nudge on his abdomen, and he will just gently walk where you want him to go. That's more of a maneuvering, but it is handling him for sure. And lastly, if a tarantula has got a good enough size, it's fairly simple to, this, again, this is his abdomen, and this is the head thorax. Between the middle legs, like right between the two sides of his legs, you can gently grab his head thorax area and pick him up, that's not harming him any. You're in between legs two and three, if you will, on one side, and two and three on the other side, and pick him up by grasping the body. That's the sturdiest part of the tarantula, and that doesn't bother him at all. Now again, handling tarantulas, there are species that like to flick their hairs off that I don't like to pick up at all because even though you can pick them up gently enough, they're gonna be kicking their legs on their abdomen, you're gonna have a mess in your face, tarantula hands are all over the place, why bother? I coax them along, I push them along, I usually don't pick them up in that method, nor do I wanna cup them, because their hairs come off and they're agonizingly irritating. So know your species again, but if you wanna pick them up, those are the methods to do so without harming the animal, which is the most important thing. And without getting bitten, which is a pretty good idea too.